It's a unique pleasure to gather round a fire and share stories and songs, linked together by the warmth and overseen by the stars. To be, for a while, part of something, this microcosm, a celestial circle which lasts until the fire fades to ash and dark sleep pulls us away. Because even a circle must have an end. Outer Wilds is about accepting this end. In a different narrative, players would be able to heroically save the universe. Outer Wilds teases this more predictable story using the Sun Station, which seems as if it could be the piece of doomsday technology causing the supernova. A more traditional conclusion could see you reach the station and flip an off switch, allowing you to escape the loop unscathed, to return everyone to their happy lives. But when you finally arrive at the Sun Station, you realise what the Nomai had realised 281,042 years ago. The Sun Station never worked. It is a folly, an attempt to kill something before its time. Nature stayed resolute. No, my writing reveals that Pi, the most enthusiastic solar saboteur, nonetheless gracefully accepted this. She wrote, I don't know what comes next, my friends. I suppose we must start over, but I'm unsure how to start over. Ghost Matter stopped the Nomai from ever trying again. But you are the master of starting over. Doing so again and again, until you too must come to accept your exit from the loop. This universe has run its course. Your 22 minutes will always be the final 22 minutes. It is only by accepting this that you can move on to something new. At the eye of the universe, Outer Wilds creates a celebration from its 22 minute epitaph. By sitting around a fire and reflecting on what you had, then acknowledging its passing, you can ignite a new universe in the embers of this one. The eye acts as a bittersweet acknowledgement of life and death, an invitation to see the joy in our limitations and to hope someone different may one day do the same. That perhaps, after the eye of the universe blinks, it will gaze upon something new, but something still brave, still curious, still serene, still dedicated, still together, still accepting. But there are some who could never recognise an ending. Some who refuse to let the fire go out. Those who try to take a different route around a circle. It is an eclipse that first guides you to the alien structure in Echoes of the Eye. As with many things in this expansion, this denial of light serves as a symbolic portent of what will be found inside the place you discover, of the fact that where the base game was about acceptance, this will be a place of negation. The Stranger is a ring world, a sealed inward-facing circular strip a ribbon cut from the cloth of its creator's homeworld. The centrepiece here is the river, which travels round this loop, broken by a dam to regulate the flow. In the waters and on the banks, wooden buildings spring up on stilts, 
mimicking neighbouring trees, whose tough root structures anchor them in the swampland. Small rafts provide the sort of exploratory excitement the player has come to expect from Outer Wilds' interstellar camping trip. If a raft reaches the reservoir at the top of the dam, an automatic crane lifts it back to the lowlands to start over. The stranger is a loop within a loop, a structural representation of its inhabitants' attitude to change. The stranger journeyed to this universe to source the signal coming from the eye. But the hopes of its people were dashed. Their species possesses retro-reflective eyes, dark but capable of brightly reflecting light sources, much like a cat's eye. Using their emerald fires granted them the ability to reflect literally and metaphorically on received information. So when the strangers reflected upon the eye of the universe and did not see themselves mirrored in its vision, they were incensed. The image of their death, of a universe being reborn without them, was untenable. They wanted to stay at the centre of life's circle. And so the strangers sat in darkened theatres and used their slide projectors to huddle around the bright light of the past. The projector took flat images and gave them life and size, creating walls of memories, drawing in viewers like a crackling fire. Placing their stills into slide rings, a carousel formation, seemed almost like a new method of travel. The reels themselves are broken rings, emphasising the yawning blank gap between the present and the past, the pain desire of the strangers to bridge time itself and return to the beginning, to a home that no longer existed. When using the slide reels, it is easy to imagine these mournful viewers reaching the end of a sequence and simply looping around to the start again. A return to innocence, a retreat from knowledge, a desire to be unseen by the eye. The image of a conclusion which seemed so arbitrary frightened the strangers so much that they built themselves a carousel, a place they felt loved, a burning projection they could walk into and hide themselves in, a ride they never had to get off. Eventually, the player can discover this place of denial this other world, a deeper loop, with another river, a digital endless stream. These layers of smaller circles nested within one another is the pictorial opposite of a signal. The waves of energy that beckoned from the eye, the inviting rings expanding out into space, have been stifled by the strangers. Instead, they have built their circles ever smaller, tighter, more insular, more hidden and private. In the depths of cylindrical towers, they surround their mystic fires and descend deeper into memory via simulation. When you find them, the fire still warms their skeletons as their minds gather in music halls to listen to melodies they always knew. If you intrude on this inner circle, they conceal their lights and hide in the dark ready to blow away any trace of the outside world. There are still poignant remnants of what these people were outside of the simulation. Despite burning the slide reels and abandoning their homes, pieces of history and culture remain on the stranger. Its degraded buildings still hold plates and goblets, signs of nourishment no longer relevant to those without bodies. Family pictures adorn the walls of houses. On signs, some snippets of language can be found, and although they cannot be translated, their meaning is usually easy to understand. The text itself takes a vertical form, similar to the shape of the trees, 
the context similarly rooted in a place far from here. There's a board game with pieces representing the strangers and another representing an eye. There is even a musical instrument, an odd device with an upper stringed section and a rotating toothed cylinder underneath. This lower portion is reminiscent of a clockwork music box, the early form of musical storage in which a notched disc rotates to sound on metal teeth. Such clockwork automation has evolved in size to be used in pianos and organs, with large cylinders storing different songs in their indentations. Its use in game again highlights the stranger's love of an old tune, played just as remembered, the endlessly looping cylinder hitting the familiar notes again and again. The string drawn on top produces an unearthly tone, similar to a theremin or musical saw. You can hear this fictional instrument represented on the excellent soundtrack by Andrew Pralo. The song, A Dream of Home, is built around an initial loop which evokes the striking cylinder, its repetition creating a sense of idyllic memory. The stringed portion can be heard on Elegy for the Rings, where its ethereal melody sails across the piece before being drowned by tides of electric guitar feedback, embodying the hope and culture of the strangers being compressed and sealed away in a resentful simulation. Other musical cues are just as suggestive. In the track Eternal Halls, a continuous drone sounds like a hurdy-gurdy, another instrument powered by rotating disc, but unnaturally slowed down, stretched out into an endless flowing lament. The whole track echoes as it does through the repetitious digital lodges the strangers have made their endless home. After exploring the ruined beauty of the stranger and the dark world of the simulation within, the player may be left wondering what is left of these ancient people, aside from empty houses and vacant bodies, whether their denial has left them as nothing more than ghosts. Being inside their digital afterlife is a stressful experience, a desperate foray into a place where we are unwelcome, where we must navigate near darkness. But Outer Wilds players are still driven to discover the centre of things, be it black holes or oceanic cores, and there is still something else hidden beneath this dark replica of a home. Venturing down deep into the caves beneath the river, below all the layers of loops, sealed away at the centre, is the prisoner. The shunned stranger who alone was willing to embrace the future. The prisoner represents those aspects of stranger culture which have been burnt away, they alone are willing to reflect with you, to share knowledge, and to fill the gap in their story. At the end of your exchange, the prisoner expresses a wish not to return home, but to keep on travelling, to cast off from this shore. This journey is of course a metaphysical one. You yourself had to die for a while just to make this meeting. The universe is about to be extinguished, and what was the prisoner's body has long stood lifeless in the diving bell. The prisoner is ready to take the unknown journey. Their only request is to do it together. Echoes of the Eye gave us the privilege of meeting a stranger and building them a raft which could escape an endless current. Gathered around the campfire at the end of the universe, we finally hear the instrument of the strangers played alone, stripped of the fearful accompaniment of an endless elegy.
prisoner plays a tune which tells us of their home, their people, those who wanted to look up and see the rings in the sky one last time. But every circle must have its end. At least, as the fire grows dim, we found time to share this last story. I think it was a good one. <laughs>